which either way you do it, you're going to be into a good bit of work. Story begins with this 1989 GMC pickup. The time I bought this, I was working with some youth kids, and one of those guys, he was about a sophomore, I think, or junior, and he was wanting a vehicle that was easy to work on to be his first truck. And so I was out at the auction and found this thing and bought it, drove it home. Truck sat in front of my shop, and unfortunately it was stolen a couple months after I bought it. Parked it there that night, and I got up the next morning, it wasn't there. So I called the sheriff, and they made a report for it. Most of the times you have a vehicle stolen, and you're just not ever going to see it again. I mean, that's just... The reality of how it <laughs> how it comes out but this was nine years ago and society was a little bit more put together then than it is now and property crimes were actually still investigated and prosecuted and so they made a search to look for it and I got a call probably five six days later that they had found it and most stolen vehicles, the statistics kind of ugly if they don't find it within pretty short window of time, uh, they're never seen again. And so I just got lucky. Old farm truck like this, it's uh, pretty easy to make a description of. You can about tell the dents and the dings and the rust spots and all that. So they found it and it was a little little touchy to go down to the scrapyard and recover the thing and unfortunately by that time it was no longer a viable vehicle that was going to see the road the interior dash had been torn apart i've taken it out now for dismantling the parts that i'm going to use out of it Then the roof got smashed in because they had a second scrap vehicle that they had stacked on top of it there at the iron yard. So after being stolen, I at least was fortunate, lucky enough to get the thing back and at least have something, even if it was torn up, destroyed. Still had the engine and trans, still had the front clip, so I pulled all that stuff out. These TBI engines, they don't make a huge amount of power, but you can use the whole standalone wiring harness and put them in another vehicle. I don't even buy the standalone harness. I just take the whole factory harness. I figure why spend money for something you already have. So for something maybe like the 59 Chevy, that's a pretty easy swap. I mean, really pretty easy swap for any old GM vehicle, late 50s through the 80s, G-bodies, trucks, whatever, you name it. You can drop that 350, 700 R4 cross member takes a little more work if you're putting it in a later vehicle that didn't have a 700 R4, but fortunately... In the parts catalogs, they do sell replacement cross members that are engineered for that 700 R4. So that's a pretty easy, painless job to do. So right now, iron is up, and I've got a whole pile of just shop junk that I've cleaned out that it'll get stacked in that truck cab and go across the scales vehicle body is kind of like a four-wheel dumpster but i'll be saving the frame off the truck because i've got an idea for it
So right here is a 1947 to 53 Chevrolet school bus. This is one that Joe and I found at an auction. It's kind of a cool old bus because it was an old hippie wagon. Got the Mr. Natural Says If It Feels Good Do It bumper sticker. Honk if you're, well, you know. And then the hotel. A lot of, a lot of action probably happened inside this bus. Leave a bus around a place where there's old cars for enough time and it'll gradually become storage, which you know me, that's uh, pretty much a given. Just mainly light, loose stuff, seat steering columns, dashes, fuel tank or two. You can see, obviously, she's missing some parts. Front clip is fairly easy to find for one of these. This old bus is actually three quarter ton. Got the eight lug hubs. The axle that's underneath of it is just one that I dummied under there to roll it around. So already just compromised from the missing rear end. Those old rear ends that these had in them weren't really that friendly of a ratio anyway. And you can see the rest of the frame kind of butchered up up front from having a different engine put in. You can see they trimmed one of the shock mounts off and just kind of butchered and cobbled as they went, as it seems to go. So the GMC truck and the school bus are within an inch of each other on frame length for the wheelbase. So seems fairly natural of a swap, which either way you do it, you're going to be into a good bit of work either patching up and gathering parts to fit the original frame or making the school bus body fit the truck frame. But school bus body has perfectly flat floor, so pretty easy to just set a level across that truck frame and figure out your mounts and build them and go. Got the old authorized personnel badge. I've seen a few of these old hippie wagons around like this. You always just kind of wish you could meet the guys that built them. Hear some of the stories about the fun that they had in them. Honestly, pretty solid bus inside. Just... Neat old relic of its time. Pretty cool that it's got the flat glass. It's super easy to replace that. Gauge is missing, not a big deal. You can borrow a set out of a truck and be on your way. Thing does have the body plate, so that's good. Be easy to get a title for it since it's an antique in Kansas. The old bus came out of Beaver, Oklahoma. Just a little town in the panhandle there. Pretty cool old piece. One that you definitely wish could tell stories because it's got decades of stories. I always see a old antique bus like this and kind of reminds me of Forrest Gump when he rides the bus with Jenny. Love that movie. Great old project bus. I may finish it, I may not, but at least getting the parts gathered and having it all packaged together, even if it's not me, even if it's onto the next guy, then either way, it's uh, one step closer to being back on the road, and that's what it's all about.